Will you make a commitment right now to the American people that you will lead the industry in ending this disastrous precision scheduled railroading, which has slashed your workforce and made railroading much less safe? Yes or no, will you make that commitment? You know, I don't really like politics, and this YouTube channel is not a political platform, but I do think Senator Sanders' questions were worth asking and worthy of a straight answer from Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw. The testimony from Mr. Shaw that you're about to see is from a hearing in front of the Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works on March 9th, 2023. That hearing came after the catastrophic Norfolk Southern derailment in East Palestine, Ohio at the beginning of February. In my opinion, Mr. Shaw's testimony was a little bit vague and ambiguous at times, but it could indicate that Norfolk Southern is and has been changing the way it operates. Senator, I understand your concern, <clears throat> and I share that concern. And if you'll permit, I, I have a couple points on that. I became CEO in May of last year. Ever since that point, Senator, we've been on a hiring spree. The number of employees at Norfolk Southern today is 1,500 more than it was this time last year. But you will not deny what you're trying to do is rebuild from the massive layoffs that took place. So what exactly is precision scheduled railroading and what kind of criticism has it faced? Well, it was pioneered by the late E. Hunter Harrison who implemented it at several companies. Some form of PSR is now used by almost every class one railroad. PSR varies from company to company, but here are some common practices. Instead of the primary focus being on entire trains, PSR focuses more on keeping cars moving. For decades, railroads used to wait until a train reached a certain length before it departed. Now, under PSR, trains are supposed to operate on fixed schedules. This concept also puts less emphasis on unit trains hauling just one commodity. These days, it's not unusual to see a train of intermodal shipping containers with other types of rolling stock mixed in. <laughs> Using PSR can result in fewer but longer trains. In fact, in some cases, what used to be two or three trains were combined into one. And those trains can be two, even three miles long with locomotives up front, in the middle, or at the end. Massive trains like that usually only have two crew members, a conductor and an engineer. The engineer can control the distributed power units that are in the middle or end of the train remotely. But unit trains haven't gone away altogether. For example, coal and grain trains are still a pretty common sight. Railroad facilities and assets have also been affected by PSR, which favors point-to-point -point instead of hub-and-spoke operations. But the changes some railroads have made haven't always worked out. Hump yard operations here at CSX's Radnor Yard in Nashville, Tennessee, were stopped in 2017, only to be reactivated in 2018. The concept of PSR can be a little bit tough to grasp at times. But my understanding, as it relates to yards, is that the goal is to reduce the amount of time a car needs to be switched on its journey, and also to reduce the amount of time a car spends in a terminal, known as dwell time. Many yards around North America have opted for flat switching methods. Instead of gravity, locomotives are used to move and sort cars. Meanwhile, fewer trains means fewer locomotives are needed. Railroads have sidelined and stored hundreds of engines across the country. Railroads have argued that PSR means better service for their customers, but the practice has been heavily criticized. In a December 2022 study, the U.S. Government Accountability Office interviewed freight rail customers who, quote, identified concerns such as reduced frequency and reliability of service and increased fees. In that study, the GAO also interviewed stakeholders, including employee unions, shippers, and railroad representatives, and they associated these operational changes with PSR. Reductions in staff, longer trains, and reductions in assets such as locomotives. The GAO study said the FRA had planned efforts to, quote, address potential risks such as employee fatigue and the effects of longer trains. Concerns about PSR have been growing as railroads have streamlined their operations and made them leaner. Wall Street, uh, about a decade ago, in order to increase the profits they were earning in the rail industry, uh, implemented a program called Precision 
scheduled railroading. Uh, the result of that is that Norfolk Southern reduced its workforce by almost 40% over six years. Uh, meanwhile, in fact, Wall Street's goal was achieved. Uh, profits soared for uh, Norfolk Southern. You made over $3 billion in profits uh, last year. Uh, I have been told by workers in, who work for your company uh, and other rail companies that they are now being asked to do more work with fewer workers, and that includes safety inspections. So well before this disaster uh, in East Palestine, uh, we have been told about the potential safety hazards. My question to you, very simply, sir, will you lead the industry in doing away with precision scheduled railroading? Senator, in December of last year, I charted a new course in the industry. And I said we're going to move away from a near-term focus solely on profits, and that we're going to take a longer-term view that's founded on our engagement with our craft employees who are so critical to our success. We were the first to pivot out of it. So the way I interpret that final statement is that Norfolk Southern is pivoting out of PSR. Only time will tell. Let's hope whatever changes they are making benefit the railroaders who are doing this challenging work day in and day out. And let's also hope that Norfolk Southern is mindful of the communities it runs through. If you want to see the full Senate hearing, I'll leave a link below. That's it for now. As always, thanks for watching.